Coach Ram here, and today we'll be talking about vitamin D3. Now, when speaking of its benefits and functions inside the body, it's almost hard to know where to actually start. It controls phosphorus, bone, and calcium metabolism. It has important roles in maintaining blood pressure and immunity and a neurological function, and it even plays a role as one of the most potent inhibitors of cancer cell growth. Up here on the board is just some of the things it plays a part in, but unfortunately, when speaking to the general public or just a random person, for the most part, they only think of it as a mood booster, which is really unfortunate because that doesn't even scratch the surface to what it actually does, the totality of what it actually does inside our body. And today I'm going to make an argument that no matter who you are, what your goals are, what your diet's like, you more than likely need this inside your vitamin shelf or whatever it may be. Now the FDA recommended daily amount for the longest time was 200 IUs, and it's still what a lot of people operate under, which is a very low amount when compared to the numerous recent studies that show that much higher amounts are optimal for health. Uh, recently, it's gone up to closer to 400 to 600, depending upon age. Older individuals generally need more vitamin D3. But again, Michael F. Hollock, for example, who's done a lot of great work in this area, along with many other professionals out there that have looked through these studies and conducted these studies, uh, talk about how the, the, the recommended daily amount should be closer to at least 1,000 IUs per day, which is a pretty hefty goal. But this is what you need to achieve optimal blood levels of this vitamin. Now, when looking at how we actually get it, the most obvious answer is sunlight. That's usually how it's thought of. Um, and the epidermal layer of our skin contains provitamin D3. When it comes into contact with the UVB light, we create vitamin D3. Now, that is a hard way to get it, though, for most individuals. It's, it's hard to be consistent with that. And on top of that, if you live in somewhere like Portland, Oregon, which is where Kabuki Strength is located at, about nine months of the year, this is literally impossible, unfortunately. So we have to turn to food. Now up here on the board, I have some vitamin D3 rich food groups here. Uh, mostly oily fish, mostly salmon, sardines, tuna. These are the foods that have the most vitamin D3. But all of these foods up on the board really depend on how they're cultivated or where you actually get them. Salmon, for example, it says 500 IUs. That's farmed salmon. If we actually catch one in a river, for example, it may be as high of a, as a thousand or more, which is, hey, that's your daily goal. Awesome. Uh, egg yolks, eggs in, are, are very similar to that. This is uh, the kind of egg that you get at a at a grocery store. If you were to go to a local farm and get, get some uh, cage-free eggs from a chicken, that's going to be three to four times higher. So it's going to be closer to a hundred, possibly even more. Very, it's the same thing with mushrooms even. It depends on how they're actually cultivated. But mushrooms bring us up the next topic of discussion, which is that vitamin D2 and D3 are very different. Just like many other micronutrients out there, unfortunately, there's a very big difference with how you get it or what food sources you get them from. Plant versus animal have very different bioavailabilities. So if you look at heme versus non-heme, iron, for example, iron being the most common micronutrient deficiency in the entire world, heme, coming from animal sources, is far more bioavailable than non-heme, coming from plant sources which is part of the reason why it's the most common deficiency in the world because most people don't know they're deficient in it because they're getting their daily recommended amount through non-heme sources when they need about twice as much because they're getting it from plant sources. And this is very similar. Every study that I've seen, and especially recent ones, show that unfortunately D2, the plant source version, uh, is half as effective as D3 in achieving optimal levels inside your body. So if you are getting it from plant sources only for the vegans, vegetarians, or just people that have a primarily plant-based uh, a, a diet, you likely need a whole lot more of this, probably more than a thousand IUs, if you're getting it through vitamin D2. Now, all of these food sources are the most dense kind. Obviously, salmon, sardines, canned tuna, these, these aren't foods that are generally in the typical American diet. These are the more typical amounts, 130 in milk, egg yolks have 37. Point is, it's very hard to get to this goal, 1,000 IUs per day or more. So this is just, just providing the argument that you more than likely need D3 to be on your shelves to achieve all of these benefits I talked about above, no matter what your goal is. It can be getting better at weightlifting, aesthetic goals, or just general health and longevity. I would like you to be functioning in every single facet of, of what I mentioned above in the best way possible. And to do so, we cannot be deficient in vitamin D3. And it's obviously a hard goal to hit when it comes to diet alone, which means that you probably need this in your supplement shelf. But luckily, it is a very cheap supplement in general. 10 to 15 bucks, you're set for months. 
uh, very easy one to, to get in your hands. I think that's about it for this topic. Spray and Morgan, sign in.